Oh man, so much epic news in one epic video. Let's go. Oh, we have a terrible Reggie Pizza Man! <laughs> OB1 plays? Yes, right. What's up? All right. OB1 plays. on everybody how are y'all doing we have a couple of dope playstation 5 nintendo switch xbox gaming news all wrapped up in one epic video but i am giving away a console in october it's going to be either a switch oled uh, xbox series s or ps5 digital edition in october make sure you're subscribed and follow me on twitter let's get to the news who we have a couple of dope news out of the first one zelda skyward sword the reviews are out and overall pretty 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 good news on the game and we got some more information and tidbits revealed on what we can expect first the game stands at a solid 82 82 on metacritic which is respectable i remember when this game launched on the wii um ign gave the game a 10 and i was like whoa i don't think the game is a 10 it's not a perfect game it is a fantastic game it has some of the best dungeons in zelda history the best story in my opinion in any zelda game but <coughs> some of the fetch quests the dowsing Oh, collecting those notes. Oh, it drove me crazy. But overall, if you've, especially if you've never played this game, great, great, great experience. So now you're going to be in for a culture shock if Breath of the Wild was your first Zelda game. That's all I'm saying, bro. You're going to be surprised when Link can't jump. He can't jump. He, he just auto jumps. That's how he's been in every Zelda game except for Breath of the Wild that I can think of. But... The reviews are out. The solid 82 on Metacritic, which is pretty good, which is pretty good. All right. Also, um, I was watching uh, Game Explain, and they revealed that the game runs at a rock solid 1080p, 60 frames per second, which is a first for a Zelda game of this magnitude, I believe. Um, to have it at 60 frames per second for a 3D Zelda game, good, good, good stuff. I will be picking up this game on Friday. Um, I'll probably live stream and do a launch stream right here on the channel. I do have my Joy-Cons coming in the mail. At Best Buy, don't mess up my order. We got the Skyward Sword Joy-Cons. So, um, Skyward Sword, great, 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 great stuff about the game. Next news item, NBA 2K22. The cover athlete has been revealed you already know, when 2K drops September 10th, I'm going to be on this game heavy, heavy, heavy. The cover athlete is Luka Donick. Luka Donick, he is the global cover athlete on the premium uh, NBA 75th Anniversary Edition. There's going to be three athletes, uh, Kevin Durant, um, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and Dirk Nowitzki. And so they showing love to the big man in the um, special edition of the game. So 2K can't wait. A, hey, I'm either gonna get the game on the PS5 or switch this year. I'm gonna try to just focus on one build in 2K and just grind that build so I can see how high I can get my rep. Um, it depends on how the demo runs. If the demo on the Switch um, is good, I get it on the Switch. If it's trash, <coughs> And if the PS5 has a lot more features, I'm getting it on the PS5. All right, it's that easy, bro. All right, next news item. Is your Joy-Con drifting? Well, it looks like someone has found a cure for Joy-Con drifting. I kid you not. YouTuber uh, on VK's channel on YouTube has a solution on how to fix Joy-Con drifting. And he's saying that all you don't need is you don't need any technical know-how, just the right tools. 
according to this um, video, all you have to do is open the case, insert a small piece of paper or cardboard where the analog is located, and that's it. Um, it's further explained how the problems inside the controller lose contact with the past, blah, blah, blah. But it seems like it's a very simple solution. And it's surprising why Nintendo hasn't fixed this already, bro. Joy-Con drifting with the Switch OLED that's about to drop. Guess what? We're going to be using the same Joy-Cons. No change. Nintendo has confirmed it's going to be the same technology in the current Joy-Cons. And so, um, we'll see. We'll see if we have... I haven't really had any major Joy-Con drifting issues in a while. My launch switch, the blue, the left Joy-Cons, I had two of them that used to drift. But since then, uh, all my other Joy-Cons, my Mario Red Edition Switch, my version 2 Switch, haven't really had any Joy-Con um, drifting issues. So we'll see. Maybe Nintendo did something behind the scenes and we don't know, but some people are still complaining about Joy-Con drift. All right, bro. Speaking of controllers, Phil Spencer has just said something very interesting for Xbox fans. Phil Spencer says the PS5's DualSense could inspire Xbox controller changes. This is coming an article from GameSpot, and he's pretty much saying that they may make some adjustments to future Xbox controllers to incorporate some of the features and technologies in the DualSense. The DualSense is an amazing controller, man. I mean, when you feel it, it just feels like a quality product and the, the, um, the rumble, the haptic feedback, the triggers, man, this is the best controller on the market right now, hands down, not even close for me. And so, Bill Spencer has said that they plan on copy. This is what I think they're gonna do. Xbox, if you bought an Xbox and it came with that um, trash controller from last generation, it's not a trash controller. Xbox controller is one of the best controllers ever made. But I say it's trash because it's the same exact controller from last generation. Um, you're gonna feel a little burnt if they start incorporating all these new features in new controllers. This is what I think they're gonna do. They're gonna incorporate these DualSense type features in the Elite Controller series. So if you, you get an Xbox Elite Controller, it'll have all these control these features that come free <laughs> for PlayStation 5 owners. <laughs> I'm just saying, bro. Xbox put themselves in a bad situation. Um, if you do it, start doing it now, you better give everybody who already bought an Xbox free <laughs> up controller upgrades. <laughs> All right, speaking about controllers and upgrades, this has nothing to do with controlling upgrades, but Ghostwire Tokyo. And this, check out the um, title of this article, and it just shows you how crazy this sounds. Microsoft's PS5 exclusive Ghostwire Tokyo is delayed until 2022. Xbox's PS5 exclusive. How Xbox have exclusives coming to the PS5 before their old console. But the game has been delayed till 2022. And at first you saw Xbox fans laughing, ha ha, that game is delayed. But all that means is it's gonna be further delayed for y'all. If it's coming 2022 for PlayStation, that means now it's gonna be delayed to 2023 for Xbox. Because Sony has made a deal uh, with Bethesda before Xbox to have exclusivity for a set period of time for this game. You think Sony's going to be advertising this game, um, paid all this money just for this game, not a launch day and date on both consoles? <laughs> ah, I can see Xbox dudes laughing. Wait, that means we got a year, wait, another an extra year too. And so, Ghostwire Tokyo delayed 2022 for um, PS5. Um, this game looked better than Deathloop. Um, Deathloop isn't really resonating with me, but I like some of the mechanics um, in this game. It looks pretty cool. It looks pretty cool. Definitely wasn't at the top of my list, but if there wasn't anything else coming out at the time, I probably would have picked it up. So, those are all the news items for this video, man. What do you guys think about everything we talked about in this video? Sound off in the comment section below. I want to know. But before you go, bro, click that subscribe button. Stay up to date. All things Nintendo. We out, boy.